Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship. We're going to be doing, uh, in addition to some of the things that we already do, we're going to be doing some new things today. As many of you know, we uh, had a prayer meeting down at the uh, Verizon Amphitheater. About 10,000 people showed up to pray. And one of the ways they led in prayer was to uh, use the shofar, as the Bible talks about. And uh, they came over here the night before. The night before the meeting at the amphitheater, they encouraged us to host them in a prayer meeting to get ready for the great meeting that was going to be about 10,000 people. And so they came here on that night before and uh, fellowshiped and celebrated. And at that time, uh, they were actually rehearsing, praying, but rehearsing for the upcoming event, the music and everything. And uh, they were about uh, 20 or so shofar blowers. And they uh, inducted me that night into Shofar International because they know of my interest in the shofar from the scriptural emphasis of the shofar. And they not only inducted me into that, but I've been praying that the Lord would provide me a, a better shofar. I had a little short one little tiny one, a little ram's horn, and it was hard to blow. And uh, now that I'm 71 years of age, uh, the uh, blowing is even harder. <laughs> so anyway, they uh, not only inducted me into Shofar Call International, but they gave me a beautiful shofar. Wow. Beautiful shofar. So I'm going to use it today. I've already used it for Shabbat Shalom. I'm going to use it today. I'm going to blow the shofar, and as soon as I blow the shofar, then Jaime is going to give us the parade music, and I'm going to do what David did. We're going to have the shofar blown, and we're going to parade the Torah around the word, around the sanctuary, uh, literally around our sanctuary here and in our synagogue. So let us listen for the shofar. <laughs> Shofar was used to call for the parades. The shofar was used to call for battle. The shofar was used to call for worship. The shofar was used to call God's people from the sanctuary to the street. And that's what we're doing here today. So if you would play the music for the... Welcome to join me in the parade, if you would like, and signify by saying, I will follow the Torah. Thank you so much. Now, while I was in the parade, after we blew the shofar, I had a telephone call, and everybody knows that when Wiley gets a phone call, he answers it. <laughs> so I'm going to answer this phone call and say, good morning, God bless you. Who's on the line? Thank you, Wiley. Good morning. Happy birthday. Well, thank you, my brother, Tony. God bless you, and it is a happy birthday for me. Seventy-one years ago... My mother gave birth to me, and um, I remember she was indeed a prophetess because 
She grabbed me as a little boy by the ear and said, Boy, you got a big mouth. <laughs> and I hope God will use it someday. <laughs> and so praise God, I think he's used it a little bit. And so Tony Wright in Waynesboro, Virginia, God bless you. Thank you for calling and thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. And I am happy. It is great to be in the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that was Brother Tony Wright, and Brother Tony Wright is in our prayer meeting almost every day, unless he's on his way to the doctor or something like that. He's a, he's a quadriplegic, but he uh, is very active for the Lord in prayer and rolling for life. Some people walk for life and raise funds to help save babies. Tony volunteered for that, and they said, uh, uh, Mr. Wright, we're sorry, but <laughs> this is a walk for life. And uh, as you know, you can't walk. And he said, no, but I can roll. And he can push that one arm. We'll work a little bit to push his wheel on his wheelchair. And they said, well, why don't you just get an electric one? He said, I need the exercise. <laughs> so anyway, um, one of the things that he and I and many other people pray about, we're going to talk more about that later today in the service, but uh, uh, one of the things that we do is we follow some of our friends in Washington, D.C., and uh, they have given us this prayer called The Call to Fall. So join me, please, on your knees. And please repeat after me. I will answer... God's call to fall on my knees in humility and seek his face in repentance so that he might forgive my sin and heal our land. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, you may return to your seats. We do welcome you on Crusade Radio. We do welcome you on the Congressional Prayer Conference. We have a prayer channel line that is open 23 hours a week. 23 hours a week, we open a communications channel. It's a phone number and an access code. And if you want one of those and you're here in the church, you get one of these cards. It has that number on it. If you're listening on television and radio and you want to call, you can call 712-432-1690. 712-432-1690, and you put in your access code. You have to have that to get in, 399-430-POUND, and we would encourage you to join us. Those 23 hours are as follows, 8 o'clock in the morning, Washington, D.C. time, 8 o'clock in the morning for two hours, 12 noon for one hour, and 8 p.m. for one hour. And that totals up to 20 hours a week. And then we add another three hours by praying on Saturday for one hour. We honor the Sabbath and only pray one hour. And then on Sunday, we do a tour of the Capitol, a prayer tour of the Capitol. I do it by telephone. Pastor Jeff Wright does it with a 15-passenger van through the streets of Washington, D.C. every Sunday morning at 7.30, and you're welcome to join that as well. That's all done through that communications channel there, and so that totals up all week long, 23 hours. If you have any questions about that, send me an email, wileywiley at att.net, wileywiley at att.net, and uh, uh, pray with us and pray for us, and we'd appreciate it. All right, let's continue our worship now. Sister Drake's going to go to the piano, and uh, Brother Paul's going to come and going to lead us, and we're going to praise the Lord in music as we fellowship today, as we are in the sanctuary. I want you to think about that word sanctuary. We have a lot of buildings here, and we refer to this one as the sanctuary. We're going to talk about that a little bit more today, about the biblical basis for that, where that comes from, and why this is a sanctuary, and why you and I, indeed, 
are a sanctuary as well. So, Brother Paul, lead us as we worship together, would you please? Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, hallelujah. I am so happy to be in the house of God today. And we are going to thank the Lord for his provisions, for his love, for his guidance. We're going to celebrate this Thanksgiving week in our songs today. And if you'll turn in the back of your book to page 637, page 637, we're going to sing, Come, ye thankful people, come. Let's, let's sing it together. Wait, everybody, find it one just second. Find it, get back there. Okay, if you're not familiar with this song, it's not hard to sing. Just stay with the words. Okay. Good. Okay. Come, ye thankful people, come. Raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in. Ere the winter storms begin, God, our Maker, doth provide for our wants to be applied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. I like this. All the world is God's own field. He not only owns the cattle on a thousand hill, but he owns the growth and the verdure in the field. And he can provide your needs and provide mine. And he promises that, you know, Solomon in all of his glory could not be arrayed like one of the lilies of the field. That's why we're told to trust him with our hearts. Let's sing it together. Uh, wait, okay. All the world is God's field. Fruit as praise to God we yield. Wheat and tares together sown are to joy or sorrow grown. First the blade and then the ear. Then the full corn shall appear. Lord of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. For the Lord our God shall come and shall take his harvest home. From the field shall in that day all offenses purge away, giving angels charge at last in the fire the tares to cast, but the fruitful ears to store in the garner evermore. Even so, Lord, quickly come, bring thy final harvest home, gather you thy people in, free from sorrow, free from sin. There forever purified in thy presence to abide. Come with all then, angels, come, raise the song of harvest home. That song talked a lot about harvest, and friends, you and I are part of that harvest Amen. for the Lord God. Amen. Jesus Christ sowed the seed, prayed the, paid the price, and God the Father watered. And as you and I yield our lives to him, 
we become his harvest. Yes, we become new creatures in Christ Jesus, but we become heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, and hallelujah, I'm one of his kids. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> uh, turn over to just the next page. Page, don't turn, just page 638. And now thank we all our God. And I'm going to ask Sister Drake to play this so you can hear it. No, thanks. Just go ahead and play it. Thank you, Sister Drake. Amen. This is a good old Methodist hymn, and uh, us Baptists can make it ring this morning. You may, is there, anybody, is there anybody in here that has sung this before, that you recognize it? Yeah, some. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's sing it together. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices, whose wondrous things hath done, in whom... His world rejoices. Okay, let's sing it together. <clears throat> now thank we all our God With hearts and hands and voices Whose wondrous things hath done In whom His world rejoices who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today look at the words of this second verse and then we'll sing the third one Oh, may this bounteous and, oh, I'm sorry, two. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our strife be near us with every joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed. Anybody say amen? Lord, help. <laughs> And free us from all ills in this world and the next. Okay, let's. <clears throat> May this, this bounteous God through all our life be near us. With ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. Now you're a good congregation and a good choir when you follow the leader anyway. When he told you to do, go to the third verse and he started out in the second. Good job. <laughs> now let's sing the third one. All praise and thanks to God. All praise and thanks to God The Father now is given The Son and Him who reigns With them in highest heaven The one eternal God whom earth and heaven adore for thus it was is now 
and shall be evermore. Amen. Good job. On page 52, back toward the front of your book, a more familiar song, and I thank God all year. I've been so thankful what God has led our pastor to do in Washington, in Texas, Amen. and other places. I just am a little jealous that he gets to do it all and I don't get to hop in his suitcase and go along. But uh, I thank God that he leads us and directs us and guides us day by day, hour by hour. If we trust in him with all of our heart, he promises he will do exactly that. Page number 52. He leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought, O oh, words of heavenly comfort fraught. Whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Skip verse 2 and go to verse number 3, please. Lord, I would place my hand in thine, nor ever murmur, nor repine. Content, whatever lot I see, since it is my God that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own power he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victory's won, in death's cold wave I will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. Amen. I want you to turn to page 215 in your hymn books. Instead of singing a solo for you this morning, I want us all to sing in praise and thanksgiving to God. Majesty, worship His majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory and praise. Will you stand with me, please, everyone that can. Stand with me and let's sing majesty together. Majesty, worship His majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, Flows from his throne unto his own, his anthem raised. So exalt, 
Lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Lord bless you. Amen. As, you Brother, Paul, as Brother Paul is uh, going down and before the pastor comes up, it is his birthday, as he's already announced. And I think I, there was a number one and a number seven. I think it was at 17. I think, it, I think he's got his age confused there a little bit. Yeah, I think it's 17. He's still young and vigorous. And we just want to say to you, Pastor, we love you. We appreciate you. So let's all sing together. Happy birthday, Pastor Drake. Let's sing it together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Drake. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Speech. And 40 more. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a great God we serve. And I'm very thankful that he's allowed me to serve him. And allows me to continue to serve him. Praise the Lord. I want to give you an announcement first, and then I want to share the sermon with you. The announcement is, is that, uh, in fact, let me, this announcement has to do with a testimony. And this is something that is coming up that I want you to be praying about and working about. But before we even talk about that, I want you to know that we did go. We had... Uh, 30 seats available at the annual 36th uh, City of Buena Park prayer breakfast. And we didn't have all of us there. We only missed two, I think, two or three, but we had a group there, a good group, a big group. The largest group that was there was our church, and we praise God for that. And uh, God... Uh, did a miraculous thing. He, he led this young lady who is a quadriplegic, who is, uh, has a great, great testimony of how God has helped her. And, and so she uh, did a great job at the breakfast and uh, blessed our hearts. And uh, two or three things happened that are your fault <laughs> because you've been praying. We've been praying about this dangerous intersection over here, right here, where five people have died over the last few years. I've gone up and complained about it. You've prayed about it. and uh, But I want to tell you two things that happened at the prayer breakfast that was a real blessing. Number one, one of the managers, city managers, came over and said, Pastor Drake, we cannot justify putting a light there, you know, a red light, red and green light, but he said, I have noticed that there's a big pole there, and I have, I will contact the electric company and have a new light put up out there, bright light. So it'll be bringing light to the darkness. It's not what we would love to have. We'd love to have a red light <laughs> that changes. But until that is done, in fact, he encouraged me, don't give up on that prayer. <laughs> He said, we can't do it right now, but we can put a light up, and we're going to put a light up. So in the very few days, your prayers are going to be answered. There's going to be better light there on that street corner to protect God's people, the people that cross. And one of the things that I pointed out to them is it wasn't that I was taken up for homeless people, <laughs> because the five people that died over the last 15 years, none of them were homeless. They were senior citizens from down the street. And uh, I went on, I did point that out to them. And uh, at that same time, uh, I was also, I went over and shook hands with some folk. And, and one of the gentlemen, a man by the name of Ephraim, or Ephraim, I'm sorry, Ephraim, if I'm mispronouncing your name. He is the head of a company here in town called 
park disposal. And park disposal is the ones that have the big dumpers. We have one. And uh, many years ago, when we started complaining, being complained about by the city, uh, they said, you're creating too much trash, yada, yada, yada. And I said, well, give us another trash dumper. <laughs> and we'll get rid of it. And they didn't do that at that time. However, when we went over, I went over to the table, the breakfast table there, to say to Ephraim, thank you for your service to our church. They pick up our dumper twice a week on Wednesday and on Saturday. And uh, we have made that a real ministry because we don't put any paper or cardboard or bottles or glass in there because we recycle that. And when that recycle trailer out there gets full, we get about three, four hundred bucks to buy gas for the van and to buy more food. So recycling is not only helping us get better use of the dumper, uh, but it helps us get money uh, to buy groceries and to help with gas and so forth. And so I reminded him of that, and he said, well, good. Uh, do you have, do, are two times a week enough? And I said, well, not really, but that's all I can afford. That's all we can afford. And he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a third dump, and it won't cost you a dime. So your prayers have been answered. And uh, I want to say thank the Lord for Brother Ron Naylor, who worked so long and so hard so many years to do that, to make sure we got good use out of it. And uh, also now Brother Peter's taking over that job. And when that dumper goes out of here, I guarantee you it's full. We put sideboard, they put sideboards on it, and they stomp it down. Ephraim said, you need to find a bigger guy than Peter to, to stomp it down. Uh, so some of you big guys volunteer. But anyway, uh, that's just one of the ways we're being good stewards of God's money, of the donations that you make. And uh, Brother Peter uh, is doing a great job there as our chief correspondent, one of them for our television show as well as our garbage man, our recycling manager, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it is a great work. It's a dirty job, <laughs> okay? It's a dirty job. But somebody has to do it, and Peter's doing it, and I praise God for that. And he brought me a suggestion that I'm going to take. He said, Pastor Drake, uh, he was excited extra dump that we're going to get. That makes his job a little easier, and it makes us be able to do more and clean up better. And, of course, they're coming after us about that always, and we, you know, we're always in a fight with the city. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But uh, Peter suggested to me that we get a, a big card, a huge big card, a thank you card to park disposal and have the people of the church sign that card. At the very minimum, sign your name. And at the maximum, say thank you, or praise God for what he's doing through you, or whatever you want to say. But uh, Brother Peter's going to get that card, and we're going to make that available for a couple of services, and then we're going to send it to Park Disposal and uh, show them that we appreciate this extra dump that we're getting, okay? And I know God will bless you for that. So you keep an eye on Brother Peter. Brother Peter will announce it later when it's available. He'll have a big card, and you can sign it. And we want to get everybody to sign in on that card, all right? And if you'll take care of that, I'd appreciate it, and I know the Lord would as well. Now, there is something coming up that I want you to pray about that we're going to be involved in and that I believe is of the Lord. But before I talk about that as such, I want to tell you what it is. It's called carols, you know, like Christmas carols, carols at the Capitol, carols at the Capitol. And that is to promote the true meaning of Christmas, not, you know, Mickey Mouse ears and not Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and all of those things, but to promote Christ in Christmas and carols at the Capitol exist to promote the true meaning of Christmas. 
In the beginning, in uh, August 14th, 2013, over a year ago, a young lady uh, by the name of Andrea, let me just give you her testimony. She said, on August the 14th, 2013, I was sound asleep in the middle of the night. The Lord spoke to me, she said, very clear and precisely, and said, Andrea, enter my courts with praise. I do, Lord, she said. I praise you. My soul responded. I immediately recounted the names of the Lord to him. You are El Shaddai. You are Yahweh. You are Elohim. You are the door. I am the gate. You are the truth. Again, a second time, she said, the Lord very strongly repeated his mandate to her. Andrea, enter my courts with praise. Lord, I responded, she said, what does that look like? Boom! This is the beginning. I was immediately awakened, and when I opened my eyes, the Lord was standing next to my bed looking down on me. The California State Capitol is the highest court in California. Enter its courts with Christmas worship. Lord, I can't call it worship. I responded in a frantic way. They'll kick me out, calling it worship. And it isn't politically correct to worship separation of church and state. Then the Lord said, it will be Christmas carol worship. Call it carols at the Capitol and extend the invitations to, O oh, come, all ye faithful. And if you do this, it comes with a promise. I will bring you a righteous leader. I told the Lord I would do it. So, carols at the Capitol was birthed in 2013. 350 people attended. And I can relate to that. Many of you know I've been arrested many times for praying at the White House. Going to jail. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying to illustrate. Finally, though, I learned a little bit. I got a little wiser. She taught, calls this carols at the Capitol. If she'd have tried to get a permit like we did, they'd have turned her down. And they were telling me, you can't pray here. This is the Capitol. Separation of church and state. So now we don't call it a prayer meeting. We don't call it a protest or a march. We call it Sidewalk Prayer Summit. Sidewalk, everybody can be on a sidewalk, no matter who you are. From the president all the way down, sidewalk's public property. Prayer, we can all pray. We're not doing it in Congress, etc. But we call it Sidewalk Prayer Summit. And ever since I've been calling it that, even the guards on Capitol Hill tell me there's nothing we can do. <laughs> and so we've learned. And this dear sweet lady, Andrea, learned that we should call it carols at the Capitol. There are almost 20 states that have a group called Carol, Carols at the Capitol. And it's going to be on uh, the 13th day of December in California it'll be in Sacramento at the Capitol and there's another 18 or 19 capitals around the nation that there are people doing that as well we're going to honor that carols at the Capitol on at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday the 13th we're going to set up our Congressional Prayer Conference telephone call right here in our fellowship hall. We're going to invite everybody to come and have lunch 
And then after lunch, they can sing off their lunch. After lunch, we're going to do Christmas caroling. The Lord willing, I'm going to be in Sacramento. I'm going to be on the steps of the capital of California. And I'm going to be singing carols from the capital. And you're going to be singing with me by telephone with people all over the world. And I'm asking you right now, as a member of this church and as a prayer warrior, pray that over the next couple of weeks, we only have about two weeks, but pray that over the next two weeks we can get a carols in the capital group from every one of the 50 states. We only have about 31 or two to go. But you pray that every state will sign up and say we'll do carols in the Capitol on December the 13th. And I hope if you're anywhere near here, you'll come have lunch and do carol singing. We're not going to preach. I'm not going to be here. I'll be in Sacramento. And we'll be doing carols from the Capitol. And the Congressional Prayer Conference chairman from Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, will be there to sing carols from the capital of California and carols from the capital of the United States of America. I pray and ask you to be a part of that. So be a part of carols from the capital. Now, I want to move now to the Word of God, and I want to ask if you would please to stand. We want to honor God's Word. Many of you saw recently when the Church of America, the National Cathedral, invited the demonic worshipers of Islam into that church, our nation's church. And you saw a very brave woman, a very brave woman, Christine Wyke, stood up and pointed to the cross in that great cathedral and said, we ought not be worshiping a false god in the nation's cathedral. And this is the scripture that backed her up. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 says, What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Not Allah, not Buddha, not somebody else. But we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. That talks about not only the national cathedral, but the very sanctuary of God. And that's what I want you to think about with me today. Also in Ephesians it says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant to you strength with power through his spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell, Christ may live in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. And then we would go back to the Old Testament just for a few moments. Psalm 15 says, a psalm of David. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your sanctuary who shall dwell on the holy hill he who walks blameless and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart who does not slander with his tongue does no evil to his neighbor nor takes up a reproach against his friend in whose eyes a vile person is despised but who honors those who fear the Lord who swears to his own hurt that does not change, who does not put out his money at interest, and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved from the very sanctuary of Almighty God. Thank you. You may be seated. 
As many of you know, we have down through the years had an ongoing somewhat battle with the city of Buena Park. And they have fought us and everything that we did. They don't want what we're doing, what we're doing. And they have reared their ugly head once again. I went to city council and I asked them to please leave our people alone from harassing them and they continued to harass them even more. And then they sent a letter that said they're going to come out and inspect. And they're going to bring the health department. They're going to bring the fire department. They're going to bring the city department of, of uh, monitoring and all of that kind of stuff. And basically, they were going to show up here a few days ago at 11 o'clock in the morning. And I instructed our people to tell them Pastor Drake's out of town. Pastor Drake's out of town. I was. I left Buena Park and I went to Fullerton. <laughs> But I was out of town. And they called me and said, uh, we, uh, we still want to come out. I said, you come out anytime you want to. We always welcome you at the house of God. And they said, well, we're, we're, we're they got real nervous when I said that. Uh, they want to come out and inspect. And I said, listen, we just paid a company to refurbish and redo our fire extinguishers. Our building is safe. It's clean most of the time. But a part of our ministry is indeed helping the poor. We are a sanctuary. And I talked this week with an attorney and with the Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. And they said what you need to do is let them know that you are a sanctuary. And I said, well, we've always called this part of the building the sanctuary. But as the pastor of the church and with my associate pastor, Wiley Jr. here, and with the congregation here, I am calling a business meeting of this organization called the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Fellowship. And we are going to, if you vote for it, I'm going to recommend that you, the body, and that's how we have to operate, that you, the body, designate all of our property as a sanctuary. Not just this church, not just this part, but all of it. That does two things. Number one, that makes it a complete sanctuary. Number two, it makes it a sanctuary because we take in people and put them on a the sidewalk. They got mad when we put them in the church before, but the bottom line is I am going to ask you to vote yes or no to designate all of our property from the north, the south, the east, and the west, every inch of it. I want to ask you to designate that as a sanctuary. And that's my motion. Do I hear a second? Motion is made and seconded. Now, do you have any questions? This is a legal move. This is a congregational move to say it's not just in the pews. In fact, the matter is we went through this one time before because when we put, remember the modular building we have out back? The city came in and said, we can go in there anytime we want to. And I said, no, you can't. That's part of the church. The only way you can go in there is to go through the shepherd of the flock. And that happens to be me right now. And they said, well, that's not a part of the church. And I said, yes, it is. And so they went away. And as soon as they turned and left, I got my men together here. And I said, y'all put a cross. <laughs> we put a cross up on that building. So now it looks like a church. It's got a cross on the top of it. And today, if you vote yes for this motion, it will not only be because of that cross, but it will be because the ambassador from the kingdom of God and your under shepherd and you as a body vote to say, yes, we want this complete property totally North, south, east, and west, wherever the property line is, from that property line in is a sanctuary. Are you ready for vote? 
All those in favor of designating this as a sanctuary fully from north, south, east, and west, please raise your right hand. Thank you. You may put it down. Any opposed? And as the moderator of the business meeting, the pastor of the church, I see that it is a unanimous vote to make this a sanctuary. To God be the glory. Great things he's done. And now, if they come on this property, they're going to be in violation of not only American law, but international law that says you cannot violate a sanctuary. And we're going to move forward with that. Now, that's business, and that's taking care of business, and I think we ought to take care of business. But the most important business we do at a sanctuary, as David said, it's a place where God's people can come. I've used the example many times of what if you took your child to the emergency room, your child was injured, and you rush your child to the emergency room, and you get there and the door's locked. You'd be upset. Why would the ER be closed? And I said that's what a church is. A church is an ER. It's a sanctuary. It should never be closed. Now, we lock the doors because we don't want the idiots to steal stuff. And we try to protect our stuff as best we can because it's not really our stuff. It's God's stuff. Whether it's just a microphone or the PA system or whatever. It belongs to God. If they're stealing, they're going to steal from God. But I just believe God wants us to be as careful as we can be. Not leave the doors open when we're not in here and so forth. We just need to be careful because it is God. But if they do steal it, and I'll close in just a moment, but before I do, I want to give you an example of one of those things that happened many years ago. We had a lady that was a member of this church. She's not here any longer. In fact, she's in heaven. And, uh, but she came to me and she said, Pastor Drake, uh, I noticed that you're using an overhead. We had the old overhead projection thing, you know, where you put the paper on top. This was years ago. This was back in the 80s. And we didn't have a, uh, a computer. We didn't have a projector. But uh, we did have a uh, cassette tape player. You know, one of those, remember the old 8-track cassette tape? And we would play things for church on that once in a while. And she came to me one Sunday morning after church and said, Pastor, I like what you've been doing, showing us these videotapes. That's great. But she said, we have to wait for you to put it in and push start and to get it to go and so forth. She said, I want to make a donation to the church. She said, I was over at the... Uh, whatever store it was, and she said, they have a television with a built-in eight-track cassette player, all one unit. And she said, I'd like to donate that to the church. And I said, praise God. Had a nice big screen on it. You just pop that eight-track. Some of y'all don't even know what an eight-track cassette player tape is now. <laughs> but you just pop it in, and it played, and it worked beautiful. And she was so proud that she had donated that to the church. And uh, we used it for several weeks. And I came in one day, and it was gone. Couldn't find it. I asked everybody, where's our TV and cassette player? We well, don't know, Pastor. Somebody must have stole it. No, nobody would steal that from the church, surely. Well, they did. We looked everywhere, and it wasn't here. So we just had a little prayer meeting and thanked God and said, Lord, that's your television and cassette player. You do what you want to, but it's yours. I'm sorry if we left the door open. I'm sorry if we wasn't protective enough of it. And that lady came to me, and boy, she chewed me out. I donated that TV to the church, and I paid for it with my hard-earned money, and she chewed me out because she said, you were an irresponsible pastor and you shouldn't let that thing get stolen. And I said, ma'am, I resemble that remark. I know there were times when I probably left the door open that I shouldn't have. 
And I know I probably wasn't as careful as I should have been, but in all honesty, miss, I thought you gave that to God. She said, oh, I did. I said, then why are you chewing me out? If God wanted to protect that television, he would have protected it. She said, oh, yeah, but you should have kept the door locked. And so we had a little tete to tete over that, and she finally about halfway apologized and said, I'm sorry. But she said, uh, you know, I, I'm a senior citizen and on Social Security and don't have much money, and that thing was expensive. It cost a lot of money. And uh, I said, well, ma'am, I appreciate that, and I thank you, and I'm sorry it got stolen. That's not the end of the story. About four days later, I came out of my office, and I walked down the sidewalk, and there's a big old cardboard box right there by my office door. And I walked over there, and there was our television, right there in the cardboard box, with a note on it saying, I am so sorry I stole your television. God convicted me and told me to bring it back. And I called that lady up and said, hey, God knows how to protect his property. He brought it back. And she said, does it work? <laughs> how do you deal with skeptics, you know? I said, yes, it works. I already tried it. I thought the same thing. Whoever brought it back might have broke it, and it wouldn't work anymore, so they brought it back. But it still works as good as it always did. And so I gave a testimony that God brought his television set back. A few weeks later, one of my guys came and said, Pastor, I'm sorry to tell you this, but our television is gone again. I said, huh? He said, yeah, your television is gone again. And I said, well, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so, we didn't have a TV anymore. Somebody said, are you going to play a video for us today? I said, no, I can't. I don't have television. <laughs> don't have one plate on. Well, what happened? And I told them. Well, I thought it came back. I said, it did, but it also left again. A few weeks later, I went walking down the breezeway, and there was another cardboard box in front of my office door. And the television was there in the cardboard box. And another note that said, I'm returning your television. <laughs> didn't say, I'm sorry. Didn't say, just said, I'm returning your TV. And the first thing I did, you know, skeptical me, I went and unplugged it in. <laughs> and it still worked. Well, we used that television for as long then as uh, there were eight tracks, and then we went to other systems. But that's how God works, folks. God's in the business of protecting his stuff and his people and his children. This is a sanctuary that you are on now, not just in, but the total property, because this is a sanctuary of God, thus ruled by the pastor and associate pastor and the body of Christ, known as the church. And I just believe God's going to protect the property even more. And I just believe that it was a great move for us to do that. And I want to say to you, the whole concept of sanctuary is that God, we read it a while ago, comes in to that sanctuary. And he came in here today. But there's another step of that. And that is the sanctuary of your heart, Paul talked about. The question is, you're in a sanctuary, you're near God, but is he in you? Is he in you? The way he comes in you is for you to accept him as Lord and as Savior. So I would ask you to bow your heads with me just for a moment. Close your eyes. And if you've never invited Jesus to come in and make your heart his sanctuary... You need to do it right now. You may be watching on television. You may be listening on the radio. But here's what I want you to pray. You would say, Lord Jesus, I know you're there. And I know you're God. And I ask you to come into my heart. Live inside me. Make my body, 
my soul and my spirit, your sanctuary. And I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, based on the authority of God's word, whether you're listening on radio or watching on television or seated here in the sanctuary, God will come inside you and dwell in you and you will become a sanctuary of Almighty God. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask our ushers to come at this time and we're going to take our offering for the day and give you a chance to give to the Lord's work. I want to remind you that the blue box is there for uh, an offering for the cross down in Branson. And we thank the Lord for what they're doing there. That cross on that hill will indeed uh, be a sanctuary for God. It will be a sanctuary for God that people can drive by. And like we've said before, there's over 10 million people go by that spot every year. And those 10 million people will say, hey, there's a cross. That's a symbol of the sanctuary of God. And so that sanctuary and the sanctuary of your heart and the sanctuary of this property, including the buildings, will indeed be very much a part of the sanctuary of Almighty God. And now, I'm going to go over here and let my brother in Christ, Brother Will Ruffin, ask the Lord's blessing on each gift and on each giver. Father, we thank you for the many blessings in our lives this day, Lord, those that are seen and those unseen. I pray, Lord, you would bless this offering, Lord, that we go to further the ministry, bless the giver and those that didn't have to give. All these things I pray for in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And now, okay, best special lunch, Mexican food. Guess what, folks? I'm going to stick around. <laughs> All right. Now, it's time for us to stand to be dismissed. I'm going to make my way to the back of the sanctuary with the shofar in hand. And I'm going to hand this microphone to my associate pastor, and I'm going to ask him to dismiss us and bless this business meeting and this establishment of a holy sanctuary here in Orange County in Buena Park. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and all the blessings that you give us. We do thank you for your sanctuary that we can come and worship you, Lord, and praise you in your house. Pray that you just help us to be a blessing to all those we come in contact, that we can share the love that you give to us, to them, Lord. Pray all this in the most precious name of all, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen.